Hello class, um, welcome to the chapter 20 in class exercises number two. Um, this is sort of an intensive question, but it feeds off of the predetermined overhead rate that we talked about prior to going on break. So I highly recommend that if you're not remembering any of that stuff that you go back and rewatch the videos that I posted, both the discussion portion and the um, in-class exercise question number one because those will give you some answers that will really help you a lot working through this particular assignment. Um, and those are out there. I put them into the learning activities folder so they are in the same location as the videos and information for this week's material. Okay, so with that I'm going to go through this question number two. Um, so we've got Case Incorporated that had some existing jobs that had been started previously. So those jobs had some costs that were being brought into June, okay? And they had beginning balances and raw materials inventory work in process, overhead implied and overhead incurred. And they had three jobs coming in here. Um, they had Rogers, Stevens and Linton, and they had materials, labor, and manufacturing overhead that was from the previous month that was assigned to each of those jobs. Now, during this month of June, they added materials to all of these following jobs for Rogers, Cost, Stevens, Linton, and Rogers, as well as some unassigned costs. So up here we have direct materials, direct labor, and these are the total uh, direct materials, total direct labor, and then we have some um, unassigned costs that are going to end up being considered um, general costs, okay? Uh, we purchased raw materials for $4,900. We paid wages. We All the wages that were assigned on all of these tickets were paid out and charged um, to factory overhead, or the cash was paid. And then we had additional overhead costs um, outside of these general use materials and time. We had $900 in depreciation and $400 in miscellaneous costs. So we need to run through and we are going to record all of the journal entries for our activity for this particular month, okay? So the first thing we're gonna record is our purchase of raw materials, which they gave us up above here, raw materials on account for $4,900. Now, because these were purchased on account, we know that the credit is going to have to be to accounts payable. And so we're going to put that there, and then we're going to debit this into our raw materials inventory. Now, the next thing is to record our factory labor costs that were paid during the period. Now, this is going to be all of the labor costs that we paid. Um, we're recording the payment of those, okay? So that needs to get charged into factory labor for $4,800, everything, whether it's on a time ticket or not. So this part, just recording that that was paid, we're not worrying about whether it was in a job or not, we're just putting it out into our pool of factory labor that we, um, that we paid for during the period. So we're debiting factory labor and crediting cash for that 40, full $4,800. Next, we need to record our manufacturing overhead costs, okay? So they gave those to us up above. Um, we had the manufacturing overhead was for depreciation and miscellaneous costs that were incurred on account. So for those, we're going to put the total of both of those out to manufacturing overhead, which is $1,300. And then we are going to credit them out of our accumulated depreciation equipment, for $900 and then out of our accounts payable um, for $400. We don't want those mixed in with our regular bills, okay? Or actually, I'm sorry, we're recording it to accounts payable for 400 and we're, um, and we're debiting it to manufacturing overhead. So we don't wanna debit those out to a regular expense account. All right, now, um, recording our assignment of direct materials, well, we need to look at all of our direct materials that were paid. Now, remember, the direct portion is this top part to all of our jobs, $4,900, okay? So we're gonna put this out to work in process. So because we used those materials um, in our uh, jobs, we are putting them out and assigning them to our cost of inventory. 
And then for our manufacturing overhead that we had, we're treating this general use portion as manufacturing overhead of $1,500, which we will then allocate later based on um, the predetermined overhead rate that they gave us. But all of this is then um, going out of our raw materials inventory and into um, our overhead for the unassigned costs and then into work in process for the assigned costs that we were able to put to a particular job. Um, for the factory labor then, the next part we're doing the exact same thing, all right? So up above they gave us $3,600 um, right here in direct labor. So that is also going to go into our work in process for $3,600. And then we need to also grab this $1,200 that we're gonna put out into our manufacturing overhead. And feel free to pause this and look through as, um, as we go along, okay? And then, this is being removed then. So we originally recorded this full $4,800 up here into our factory labor. We are now removing it out of that factory labor. So when it was paid in cash, it went into the factory labor. And then now that we're doing our housekeeping at the end of the month, we're removing it from factory labor and assigning it out to work in process and our manufacturing overhead. All right, so our next one is we're gonna record our assignment of our manufacturing overhead. So if you look on my pad here, um, I wrote down, I've got this $3,600. So that was our direct labor. And they showed us up above here that we had um, a direct labor rate or I'm sorry, a direct labor amount of $3,600. And then we had a predetermined overhead rate of $1.25 um, of overhead for each dollar in direct labor. So if we take that $3,600 and we multiply it times one, this is sort of written wonky here, times 1.25, that rate, that's gonna give us $4,500 in um, manufacturing overhead. All right, that we are going to assign into our, um, our work in process here, okay? So to assign that, we are going to debit our work in process inventory for $4,500. And then we are going to credit um, this out of our manufacturing overhead where we had that plugged originally. So we're taking that overhead and we're charging it to our inventory that we're working on. All right, now uh, at the end of all this, we have completed some of our jobs, okay? So this is where it gets a little bit complex. I'm gonna flip my board over here because I wrote all this down just to make it a little bit simpler. And then I am going to show you um, my, um, my pad here really quick, go back to full video here so you can see this a little bit larger. Okay, so what we have here uh, for a pad is uh, we had beginning balances, okay? So beginning balances that came in, and if you look at the top of your sheet, all right, we had for these companies, we had um, Rogers, Stevens, and Linton, all had beginning balances for materials, uh, time, and overhead, direct materials, time, and overhead. So the beginning balances here, and I'm gonna go back to sharing here really quick. We had, um, for each of these, um, Rogers had materials, labor, manufacturing, 600, 320, 400, which is 600, 320, and 400 here. And then Stevens had 800, 540, and 675. And then um, Linton had 900, 580, and 725. So those were the amounts that I brought in. Next, what I did was I took their amounts, so I added into their direct materials for Rogers 800 and 300. Um, and that went um, up here, 800 and 300. And then I added those together to get a total of 700. 
And then um, for uh, uh, Stevens, they had um, 500 in direct materials and 360 in time. And then Linton had 1300 in materials and 1200 in time. Okay, so I'm going to go back then to uh, my pad here so you can see that. Okay, so, so these were the amounts that in, were incurred then during the month and all I did was add those all together to the beginning balances to get totals. So the last thing that I calculated out here was, so these beginning balances, 400, 675, and 725 were for their overhead that they brought in from the previous month. For this month, we had to take those new charges that were incurred and multiply them times 1.25, that um, predetermined overhead rate. So for here, and that's based on labor. So for here, I took the 850 and the 390, added it together, multiplied it times 1.25, and I got 1550. Here, they had 360 times 1.25 is 450, and then 1200 times 1 1.25 is 1500. So then I added those together and then I just totaled all of it up here and that gave me a grand total of 14,740. And so I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen here again. Um, and uh, so what I've got here then is going down here to make our journal entry we are going to debit. So these were all of these amounts that we had here. This 14,740 was in our work in process inventory. Now we want to remove it from work in process and move it into finished goods. So 14,740. And then crediting work in process inventory for the same amount. All right. And then um, the next entry is to record the sale of goods. This one's super easy. They gave us the amount of above, no math involved, um, sold for $18,900. So there's our amount for $18,900. And what are we going to do? They gave us cash. So we're going to debit cash. And then we are going to credit what? Sales, because we sold it. So we have to do an entry to record the revenue for the sales, debiting cash, crediting sales. And then we also have to record this, these jobs being moved out of inventory and into cost of goods sold. So we're gonna debit cost of goods sold and we are going to credit finished goods, okay? And the amount for that is just gonna be what these three, because it was the same three jobs, watch out if you have different jobs that are completed than what are sold. In this case, they were the same ones. So we're just taking that 14,740 here. All right, but if we were not doing that, then what we would do is we would end up going back to um, our job list for whatever jobs we had and then totaling up um, the total. So like for Linton, 2200, 1780 and 2225, that would be the total that we would pull out of finished goods if we were to sell just that job, for example. So you're going to take the total of the materials, time and overhead for the particular job that was sold, add that together, and then get um, your overhead, or I'm sorry, your uh, finished goods inventory that you're moving into cost of goods sold. Okay, so that's it for that particular problem here. Um, I will run through this slowly back up so you can see what the answers are. Feel free to pause it, and hopefully that answers your questions on here. Um, I'm going to pause this and then pull up the new question in a moment. Oops, I just realized there's another section for this particular problem. So I'm gonna go through and um, we needed to make the entry here for the work in process inventory section. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you first what we're gonna end up with. This is our T account. We're always gonna have our um, beginning balance that's gonna come in. So that just pulls up. So this is work in process. We go way up to the top here and we had 5540 in work in process from our um, beginning balance here. 
And then we just need to go through and we're going to grab all of the entries that we made that hit our work in process. Okay, so looking down our list here, we've got work in process where we recorded our direct materials for $4,900. So we need to do that next. So um, direct materials for $4,900. Um, the next thing we have here is going to be our um, direct labor. So we got that one, direct labor uh, or factory labor, um, $3,600. So And then um, what else did we have here that hit this? We um, assigned our overhead for $4,500. So we're gonna get that um, overhead applied for $4,500. And then um, we had, what did we have that came out of our work in process? Well, we had our completed work here for $14,740. If we take our beginning balance, we add in these three items and subtract out what was in our completed work. That's going to give us a, an ending balance at the end of $3,800. Okay, so um, our last job that we had, we had one job cost that was not finished, right? So if we go back up at the top and we look at all these jobs that we had going, Rogers, Linton, Stevens, they were all done. And then we had cost. So cost was not in existence at the beginning. Um, it just had the $2,000 in direct labor and $800 in time. So we're gonna record those out to move into the next period here. So um, cost had direct materials of $2,000 and direct labor was $800. And then what did, would we have for manufacturing overhead then? We would need to take 1.25 times that um, direct labor. So 1.25 times 800 is $1,000 for that. And then we just add all of those together and we're gonna get 200 plus 800 plus 1,000, that's just gonna be 2,000. So that's all we had. Oops, I got a, did I write that down? Oh, um, that was 2,000, not 200. I typoed that. So 2,000, so 2,800 um, and, sorry. So 2,800, 3,800 typo there. Got me. All right. So 2000 plus 800 plus 1000 3800 dollars and then we need to have our cost of um, goods manufactured here. Okay? So this is going to be for a time period. So it's going to be for the month ended June 30th. Um, we're going to have our um, work in process that came in as of June 1st, which was 5000 uh, $540. And then we are going to have um, direct materials that were used for $4,900. And then we're going to have um, our direct labor for $3,600. And then we're going to have our manufacturing overhead that was applied. So, and that was for $4,500. So, we're gonna total all of that up and that's gonna give us our total manufacturing costs um, that we had for the particular period. Uh, and that's gonna add up to $13,000. So, um, let's see, yep. And then we're going to um, take our total cost of work in process here for $18,540. And we are going to subtract out our work in process as of June 30th. So um, we've got beginning balance plus inputs here um, to get a subtotal. 
and then we are going to subtract out what we had for our ending balance at the end, which was the $3,800 here from cost. And that is going to give us our cost of goods manufactured. So this goes back to our, um, let's see, where am I looking at here? Total cost of, oh yeah, here we go. Oops, cost of goods manufactured. And that is 14,740. So we're just tying out those, no, those same numbers that we did in our journal entries up above. We're taking our beginning balance, um, direct materials, direct labor, which they gave us, manufacturing overhead. Um, and then we are uh, adding that to our beginning work in process plus our total manufacturing to get our total cost of work in process subtracting out our work in process at the end and everything between what went into this cost of goods manufacture or total cost of work in process minus our ending balance all of that had to be charged over to our cost of goods manufactured so this is goes back to that same um, general inventory um, equation which is beginning balance um, plus um, inputs which is often purchases, or uh, in this case, because it's manufacturing, there's labor and overhead, um, minus outputs into other, um, either into cost of goods sold or into um, cost of goods manufactured in this case, is ending balance. And you can rephrase that as your beginning balance plus your inputs minus your outputs, oops, sorry, my, I'm sorry, minus your uh, end balance to get your outputs. So it's the same, it's just a rearrangement of the exact same equation here. So you might wanna go back and just review that quick if you, if you are forgetting about that from previous. Okay, here we're going to work on our last uh, in-class exercise here for chapter 20. Um, we have a company that uses a job order cost system and they had established some predetermined overhead rates. Uh, meanwhile, they made some estimates about what they thought was going to happen, okay? And they applied things to these three departments based on um, what uh, what they had calculated, okay? So um, the estimates that they made are at the top here. They had manufacturing overhead, direct labor costs, direct labor hours, and then down below, they looked at their actual job cost sheets for the year and said, okay, this is what actually happened. So up top estimates on the bottom, um, what actually happened and what actually got applied to jobs for inventory. So, whoops, uh, gotta go to my student view here. Anyway, um, so what they wanted us to do, and we'll get to those answers here in a minute, but um, what they wanted us to do is say, okay, based on what they are showing up here for their manufacturing overhead, what was the predetermined overhead rate that they used? And then they gave us some assumptions here. So they applied the overhead based on direct labor in department D, direct labor hours in department E, and machine hours in department K. So looking at my, um, my video here, I'm going to put this a little larger for you. So if we know what the manufacturing overhead is that they gave us, um, which we do, they gave us um, for for D, they told us it was 1,200,000, and for E, it was 1,500,000, and then for K, it was 900,000. Um, so then we can divide that by whatever their basis is that they gave us, direct labor, labor hours, or machine hours, to, um, to figure out what their predetermined overhead rate was. Okay, so for the first one, um, they did it based on direct labor costs. So we're gonna divide that by 1,500,000, and that's gonna give us an 80% rate for that, okay? For the second one, they took the million five and they divided it by labor hours of 125,000. 
So this is all coming from that estimates sheet. Um, I will flip back to that in a minute and we'll look at that. Um, but when I divide that out, it's gonna give me um, $12 per direct labor hour. And then for K, we're dividing it out by the machine hours, which there was 120,000 mach uh, machine hours in their estimate. So that is giving us a rate of $7.50 um, for that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my um, screen share here for you so you can see this. All right, so um, what you're seeing here then is um, we've got a, uh, so here were, here was the direct labor hours for the Psycho 125, uh, machine hours was 120. So I pulled all of this information from this estimate up here, and I'm going to put those amounts that we calculated here. So, oops, 80% uh, percent we calculated $12 per direct labor hour and then $7.50 per machine hour for Department K. And again, that's just what we had calculated right up here. Okay, so moving on to the next section here, they are asking us, okay, what were the total manufacturing costs that were assigned to jobs in January for each department, okay? So if we are going to look at that for department D, we can look up here at the top and we can get those numbers. I'm gonna flip this over here. Now, what they actually applied, though, is not going to um, necessarily be um, um, what actually happened, okay? So they've got their rate that they're assigning, and so they're going to be looking at this based on their predetermined rate. So up above, they gave us some actual amounts that were incurred, but what they would have actually assigned would have been um, based on that predetermined overhead rate that we had down here. So I'm gonna go back to my board here and kind of walk you through this calculation here, all right? So they had direct materials and direct labor for each of these that were supplied above, and this is the actual here, okay? what happened. And then we're going to basically take those predetermined overhead rates that we just calculated and we are going to calculate out what would have been assigned to the jobs based on those rates. So 120,000 in direct labor times the 80% gives us... Okay, sorry, we, we paused out there, but um, we're back here. Um, so 120,000 in direct labor times that 80% rate um, gives us 96,000, okay? So then we add that up, 356,000 is our total. Um, we took the $12 rate that we calculated here and we multiplied it times um, the actual $11,000 in labor hours that they gave us to get 132,000. Um, for Department E, and then for Department K, they were doing it based on machine hours. So we took that 750 rate, multiplied it times the actual uh, machine hours to get 78,000. And then, so we just totaled these up. These are our three totals, 356,000, 368, and 193. I'm gonna go back to my screen share here and um, enter those in. So 356,000, whoops, I think I just put 356. There we go. And 368,000 and 193,500. All right, so that's what we've got for our total manufacturing costs. When we add up our actual direct materials, our actual direct labor, and then our um, overhead based on our predetermined overhead rate, okay? So then they're gonna say, all right, well, did we over or under apply our um, overhead here? Well, going back to the amount we had here, we had $96,000 that we calculated for Department D. If we go up to the top here and we say, what did they allocate? 
or what did they have on their job cost sheet? The actual was 99,000, we allocated 96,000. So we had $3,000 difference and that was under applied because we only apply, we applied less um, 96,000 than what was needed, okay? Now for the next one, um, they, uh, the actual on the jobs was 124,000 and we had calculated 132. So that difference is $8,000. And there, because we applied 132 and there was only 124, we over applied that amount. Okay, so if I take actual minus applied and it's positive, then it's an under applied. And then if I take the actual minus the applied and it's um, less, then it would be over applied. Or you can do it backwards. You could take the applied and subtract out the actual and, and get it either way. Um, the third one, um, they had on the jobs um, 79,000, but we only allocated 78. So there's a difference of a thousand, and that was also under applied. Okay, and that is it for problem number three. And that completes our in-class exercises for um, this chapter 20.